Morris, howdy, Chuck and Snooky. Uh, maybe, maybe I could just have the band come over on Monday nights and play a set or two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, my first guest tonight, you well know, when was the first time that Roseanne appeared on this show? I, what year, do you know? Let's check with our staff. We'll check with our staff. Staff? Staff? Uh, uh, well, she has become one of the, if not the biggest, brightest stars on television, and she's, uh, she's going to be performing. Now, it says Pheasant Run Theater. Should it be Pleasant Run Theater? Or, or Pheasant? Pheasant Run Theater, okay. In Chicago, May 30th, with her husband, Tom Arnold. Would you welcome Roseanne Arnold? Yeah. Carson discovered me, made me the huge international megastar that I am now. Uh, I used to live in a trailer, okay? And it's really awful, so I work really hard to get out of there and everything, you know, so now I make TV and movies. What do I do all day? I sit in a trailer. <laughs> and I don't fit in so good out here, in case you didn't figure that out. But it's kind of true, you know, I don't know. This place is like no place in the whole wide world. People out here, well, they ain't like people where I come from, you know. I try to fit in. I try to go to them Hollywood parties and everything, but they ain't like no party I ever went to, you know. Like, I spent the first hour wandering around this great big old house looking for the keg. <laughs> the host or hostess, whatever, you know, and I go, hey, man, uh, where's the keg, man? <laughs> they go, well, there is no keg, Roseanne. <laughs> Whoa, you're out of beer already? <laughs> Whoa, well, gee, I'll make the run, you buy, I'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody at those parties is interested in having any kind of fun either. They're only there to, like, kiss the butt of the most famous person in the room, you know? <laughs> Which is always me. <laughs> and you know how you are when everybody's giving you all kinds of attention. You're like, please, leave me alone, please, you know. And so then somebody more famous comes in, they all desert me, you know. Somebody like Chuck Woolery or something, you know. <laughs> then, then I'm all lonely. Come back. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me, I'm famous, remember? Remember I sang the national anthem and everybody got really, really mad? <laughs> yes, that was one of the happiest moments of my life, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so proud to have shared it all with you. Uh, a great Prozac moment. Thank you so very much. <laughs> you know it's bad when the president of the United States comes out and says your act sucks. You know that. <laughs> You know, I'm so mad at that little pinheaded wimp, George Bush, for saying that about me anyway. <laughs> but I do like his wife. I do like Miss Bush. She way outclassed her husband, don't you think? Yeah, yeah I like her. Because she's just like a regular down-home gal, Mrs. Bush. You know, you could just see her sitting there on her front porch with her nylons rolled up under her knee, you know. <laughs> or in that rocking chair waiting for the meatloaf to be done, you know. Fanning herself between the legs, you know. <laughs> you just see her doing that. <laughs> just like them old ladies do. But... <laughs> Anyway, so here's what happened to me and how I became a comic, you know, and everything like that. Like, I was having this one regular day, because I used to be a housewife, although I preferred domestic goddess, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm sitting there in the house this one day, and I'm doing this regular housewife stuff, like, you know, dusting the pot roast, cooking the curtains, you know, scouring out that tub with a non-abrasive cleaner, the whole deal. All of a sudden, I just have, like, this major reality alert. You know what I mean? Like, I go, oh, my God, I says. I love being a wife, I love being a mom, but I need something more. Like, perhaps a life. <laughs> so I wait for my husband to come home. He comes home 5.15 like he's done every single day since the birth of the universe, you know. I says, hi, honey, you pencil neck geek. I says... <laughs> I say, you ever look in the mirror 
ever notice you have a weak and characterless chin, huh? Did you, huh? <laughs> so he gives me that typically intuitive male response. Gosh, it seems like you're not happy, Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, I'm two days past happy. <laughs> and then he goes on with that husband stuff, you know how they do. Well, uh, maybe it's that time of the month, Roseanne. Yeah, it's that time of the month. Yeah, right. Uh, you better stand back, honey, because it's a full moon and you're looking at high tide. <laughs> well, I hope you like impressions. Johnny did a great impression of Willie Nelson, and now I would like to give you my impression of Miss Barbara Streisand. <clears throat> I think she is very talented and seems like a nice person. <laughs> well, that's the impression I get. So, anyway. Oh, I'm fat, so it's good that I'm fat, because fat moms are better than skinny moms, as you know. Way better, because what do you want when you're really depressed, you know, some skinny mom? Uh, well, why don't you jog around a while, and that'll release adrenaline in your blood, and you'll better cope with stress. <laughs> or some fat mom. Well, let's have pudding, Oreos, and marshmallows. <laughs> a brand new week. <laughs> but me and my husband, we're on a diet now. We're on the mirror diet. Have you heard of this? It really, really works, okay? You eat all your food in front of a mirror in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> it really works. You know, of course, some of these fancier restaurants don't go for it. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm remarried, but it's amazing how much my, uh, just like my first husband, my second husband is. I think, you know, they're all the same guys sometimes. I don't know. Like all husbands, all guys, they think that the woman knows where everything is, don't they? They think you know where everything is. Where's my keys? Where's my wallet? Where's my underwear? Where do I leave my shirt? Where's, you know, everything in the world? You know, they think the uterus is a tracking device. <laughs> Somebody miscued and we had to, oh, well. you, you had a punchline for that? Yeah, because I was going to go, they think you know where everything is. Because he comes in there and he goes, hey, Roseanne, do we have any Cheetos left? And I go, yeah, like he can't go over and lift up that sofa cushion himself. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What year, what year was it now? You uh, stepped out here was, in front it, of it and, it and was, absolutely devastated the audience. Oh, so. man, it was 86. Really? Yeah, September of 86. It goes fast, it's totally, it? yeah. And the very next day, you know, after I did that first thing, yeah. the very next day I had a career, and I mean, yeah. uh, my husband, my first husband, you know, before I dumped him, yeah. my first husband, <laughs> <laughs> well put. <laughs> he was still working at the post office when I first came on this show. So I That's mean, right. the, you know, I, I'm, so, uh, you know. Well, you got to have a you. remarkable career. Thank, thank, thank you. you, know, John, you've done so much for me that. I, and you have really done so much for my career that I would like to write you a $15 million check right now. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> you you'd like to, like your impression of Barbara Streisand. <laughs> we got to cut away. We're coming back. There we are.